Hello. In this edition of Killing with Cubase, we're going to talk about automation. In this section, we are going to talk about my absolute favorite thing in the world. Well, I don't know if it's that. I don't know if it's like in the boob category or the I don't know, money, power. I don't know, I'm a white guy. Anyway, um, it's automation. And automation is absolutely incredible for an uh, incredible tool for what we do in almost every genre. I don't think I can think of one kind of music where I don't love automation. For, for and but basically the reasoning is um, we had this opportunity to psychologically manipulate the listener uh, on an incredible scale if the music's any good, and by making things important, by making them not important. Um, can have, make an enormous a dif enormous difference on on the impact of the song itself. So, I mean, Cubase is incredible because it has. I think you can automate everything. I mean, there may be like two things you can't automate, and I can't think of one. So, um, let's just solo the virus here. We've used this sound before. These things. I keep using the same clips because because they're here. Okay, now I want to. I'm going to loop this, and so I'm going to click J. Well, that's the snapping tool. We kind of talked about that in another one, but see now it automatically defaults to 17. If I turn J off, this thing, then it goes wherever I want, like anywhere. So in this, since we're going to loop, I want it to land right on the beat, and these are all quantized MIDI, MIDI thingies. So, okay, uh, yeah, I push the loop button. Okay, it's looped. Now, what we're going to do. By the way, the click track C, I had it on, you can see it right here. I push C to turn it off real fast. Kind of an instinct thing you, you develop over time when you've used Cubase long enough. Okay, so we need to go to the, the track at hand and right click show automation. And this is pretty damn straightforward. I'm gonna make it as big as possible just to kind of show you. And I often do this anyway, um, just so it helps me when I'm drawing this crap. Okay, now, Automation in and of itself, you can't even touch it right now. And the reason being is we haven't engaged it. We haven't turned it on. And we need to tell Cubase, hey, you need to read this damn thing. If, if not, Cubase couldn't care less about, um, about what I'm actually up to. So I have now pushed the R button. And so now if I want to keep it, the track exactly where it is now, I can do it. And uh, that's boring and no, that's not the point. So let's uh, raise it up, make these really loud, and then and these real soft. And you can see it will snap to the grid because I have the J selected. J, J. Okay, and that, that's fine for now. All right, now let's just hear what we got. Actually, hang on, I'm gonna turn that up so you guys can hear that better. So it's getting louder. And that's soft again. And I've just went on this, this this big spiel about how you can psychologically manipulate the user. And there you really couldn't even hear it change that much, even though we'd bumped it six decibels, which is the maximum in Cubase, I believe. Yeah. And part of the big thing is is relative levels. And you hear people talk like, um, oh, the only human ear can only hear one decibel, or what's the minimum? I, I'm already messing it up. The, the minimum a human ear can can hear is a uh, uh, one decibel change. Well, that's true, I think, like if I, like, forget automation for a minute, and I just got this little fader, and I go, like, in theory, when I move it from 16 to 15, you're supposed to go, I can hear it. But relative levels, let's put some drums back in this. Actually, let's put everything in it. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Okay, then that our little bell virus sound here um, is uh, it's still kind of faint. I, mean, I guess for this we should make it a little bit hotter. And I've got it. oh hell, I got an EQ making it all dull. All right, we're gonna bypass that EQ using that little yellow button. All right, now let's turn this automation on and just see what happens. And I didn't do this. I mean, this is arbitrary junk. I did to illustrate what automation does. Oh, 
Okay, now you can see how drastic that track went up and down, and it, it was infinitely more drastic, in my opinion, than um, what I showed before by itself. That's just because relative um, items always tend to uh, highlight changes in, in one another for whatever reason. So, um, the only problem with this example is I haven't shown you a way, like that didn't make the music more intense, that didn't give you goosebumps or um, excite you on any real level. So, this is the tool and that's the basic concept. Now we can also use it without uh, the grid and we can put it wherever we want and there's a lot of, of waveform options you can get into if you get into the details of, of the volume automation where you can make parabolas and things of that. I don't ever really do that stuff and they, I may be missing out but this is kind of how I'm teaching this thing is I'm teaching what, what I do and I've never really uh, claimed it was the right way it's just the way that's worked for me. Um, so um, keep that in mind you may want to investigate further and, and there's a, a whole manual on bottom bottom vol or an automation so make sure you check that out for sure now I said we can automate just about anything um, I'm gonna leave this automation just like this even though I don't think it really is of any worth um, like musically just for just as an, an illustrator here well we can I told you we can automate anything well we can and for example, we click on more. This shows you, for example, we can the equalizer built in the Cubase on e, e, the first EQ band. We can turn it on. We can change the type of filter, um, like a shelf or band pass or, or, or high pass, that kind of thing. We can gain and frequency, um, and even like the type of, of EQ it is. So that's on every every EQ thing, meaning built in Cubase, meaning this every uh facet this can be changed so if you want to have a filter going like boosting the bass or cutting the bass like we could record all that stuff exactly um so that's pretty powerful stuff um and that's just the, the tip of the iceberg the more important stuff is the sins i'm always using those meaning um let's say we want to change the sin level two um which currently i'm not using one so let's see do we have it we have two okay let me make sure actually all right, so we're going to go to the virus, uh, sends, and again, I could do this in the E button, but I'm just working over here because I don't even know why. There's no reason. Okay, now, okay, so now you notice whenever the this little blue line is directly connected to this one. Okay, that's just how much stick we're giving it in terms of how much we send of the virus track to this reverb. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn everything off. I'm going to solo this. All right, so let's turn the read button on. So now it officially cares what we did. And uh, I'm going to turn... Whoa, whoa, whoops. I'm going to turn the reverb all the way off, and we're going to have it fade up real loud, and then turn it back off again. Let's just see what that sounds like. Actually, let me do it with the delay off because that, that could trick some of you younger guys. Okay, and again, no musical worth right there, so it, it the, the, the effect is not as exaggerated as it probably could be, but uh, actually, I know it could be, but uh, so it's kind of hard to show you. Um, Kind of what I'm talking about, but just keep in mind that's how the function works. So we're just gonna just click one dot to anchor the thing down, and then to wherever it is, and then the new spot to wherever you want it, and then change as needed. And you can do some pretty uh, wild stuff with this. And there's ways to draw this. Uh, I don't even remember how. I think it's this thing where you can go. You know, if you really want to do it that way, and that's that's fine too. Um, again, you should probably explore some of these things in greater depth because I just kind of scratched the surface on, on a lot of them.